Hello everyone, Reza here. Welcome to another how to video. In this one, we are going to focus on light groups or light AOVs in Maya. Now, knowing how to create light groups and write each light into an AOV is extremely important as we can limit the light contribution from a single or multiple lights using this functionality. You can intensify a particular source of light, combine your lighting strategies in post and enhance the overall quality of your work. So let's get to work and see how we can achieve that. Now I've got a scene, it's a, a sort of a, a toy car that I have uh, modeled. There are Arnold shaders that have been applied to this uh, simple model. And I've got a lighting setup present in the scene. Now the, the, the tool that I use to check the setup and basically sanity check my work and manage my lights in the scene is Light Manager. The way to access it is you need to make sure that your Arnold dropdown is present. You click on it and you go to all the way to utilities and then you have light manager. I usually press control shift and basically place that into my active tab. If I click on it, that gives me a summary of what my lighting looks like. So I have a key light and I have a rim light and I have an environment light and it is very important to name them carefully. Basically, the way that I name them, I usually target the role of the light. So for example, this is a key light. As a result of that, I just named it a key. And you can see that I have access to the color or temperature. You also have access to exposure. And again, you can apply a map to it. You have access to samples, which is quite useful. And of course, you can enable and disable the lights. So before anything else, let's look at the contribution of each light. And then we talk about how to write a light on an AOV so we can use that in post-production. So if I tick off those two, this is the amount of contribution I'm getting from my key light. Probably I can actually increase that to 19 stops. Yep, that's a much stronger presence from my key light. And then if I turn it off, enable a rim light, that's what I get a, a really nice contrast from um, my rim light, which is an area light. And you can see it with the icon here that it represents area light. And if I turn this off and enable my dome light, it's a, a sky dome with an HDR attached to the color channel. So very simple scene, but I intentionally use this setup because you get a variety of um, roles within my lighting setup. I'm going to enable all three, close the window, and let's have a look at how we can use those lights within our AOV setup. If I go to render settings and go to AOV tabs, you can see that we do not have any specific AOVs for lights. We have shading based AOVs to target indirect emission, um, direct ray count, um, some utility ones such as ID, normal points, so on and so forth. But we do not have any for lights. So in order to do that, we need to take two steps to achieve that result. First step is to define light groups. Let's see how we can achieve that. I'm going to go to light, control A to go to attribute editor, scroll down until I get to the visibility and there we have AOV light groups. By default, it says to default, which is practically means empty. Now what you need to do is to give this a name. What I would like to do is start with the role underscore LGHT for light. I'm going to copy this and do the same thing for the rest of them. I'm going to go to rim, select this, paste, and just change this to rim light. I'm going to go to environment, scroll down, go to AOV light groups, paste, 
and env for environment underscore light. First step done. Next is to go to render settings, AOVs, and it's time to actually add a custom AOV because as I said, we do not have them there. I'm just gonna close the viewport rendering and switch to viewport 2.0. So it's much easier to see what's going on. I'm going to add a custom attribute. Now here's the thing, every time you start with a light pass or a, a light AOV, you start with RGBA underscore, followed by the name of the light group. In this case, our first light group is named key light. I click, and then we have the new light pass. It's RGBA, it's EXR, and the filter is set to Gaussian. Let's continue. I'm gonna go to add RGBA underscore, and then followed by rim. So I'm just going to paste and just switch key to rim. It is important to use the exact same name. I'm gonna go add custom RGBA, underscore E N. Now with this one, I'm going to intentionally leave it as this. Let's say it's a typo and I'm going to go create just to show you what happens if you make a mistake. You know, we want to cover all the hypothetical situations. Now I'm in render settings. I'm going to go to system. I want to render with CPU. And because of that, I need to be mindful of my sampling. So I'm going to reduce that to a sample to three, and I'm just going to go to Arnold and hit render. Now, what I'm looking at is a beauty pass. However, if you would like to have a look at your passes, you need to go here and there we have it. The key light is there. The rim light is there. And you may say, Reza, the environment is there too. How come? Because the name was uh, put in incorrectly. If I click on it, we indeed have nothing. So I'm going to stop that, minimize it, go to AOVs. I'm gonna right click in here and I'm gonna remove this AOV, add a new custom, RGBA underscore ENV underscore LGHT. Now this should work for us. By the way, I'm just going to scroll down and set this to 540. We really de don't need 1080 at this point. As usual, all we look at is the beauty. But this time, if I go to environment light, there we have it. So uh, environment light, key light, and rim light. Now, all I need to do is to render those. The way I do it, it's very similar to the way that you render any sequence. So I'm just going to go in here, set this one to 1080. I'm going to here and crank up the AA sample to eight and diffuse set to two, specular set to two, that will get the job done. And for ray depth, I set this to diffuse two bounces, which works for me. And with those three selected, you can actually kick off the render. I'm going to scroll up. You can merge AOVs if you want. So when you bake it, you can get one EXR instead of three EXR files. And probably another thing that I do use is I include render passes as well as a token. So this token is just about render passes. So what I'm getting is not just the name of the scene, but instead the render pass name, which is a uh, very specific. You can go half precision as well with that. You don't get 32 bit, you get 16 bit, but definitely uh, you won't be seeing too much of loss in quality. So half precision works for me in this particular case. Sometimes you do need 32 bit in that case, make sure half precision is not ticked. And that should get the job done. In this case, I need single frame, but if you want a sequence, then you definitely need to set this to um, a range and of course for camera I'm using my camera one I'm all set I'm gonna go to render menu set render 
and render sequence make sure camera one is selected obviously if you set projects then the frames will be written inside the images folder of your main directory now that part is done let's render out the scene and look at how we can assemble those light passes inside foundry nuke Now let's finish this tutorial and have a look at how to set up those AOV passes. Now we have a comprehensive AOV pass workflow on this channel. Just search for multi-pass rendering and compositing. And I will show you um, a step by step on how to create separate AOVs and composite them like this or how to have that as emerged AOVs. Now I have a beauty pass here. That's what you get if you've been following along. And then I get environment, I get key, and I've got rim. So beauty, environment, key, and rim. I'm going to start with just a key, move it to the side, have my viewer here. And first step is to combine it with my rim light. I'm gonna select the two and press M to create a merge node. Every time you want to have uh, those passes composited then the operation would be set to plus and again uh, i uh, encourage you to watch the other tutorial on that i'm going to be fairly quick about this so my pipe b is going to be the rim light and my pipe a is going to be key light here is the result so with without with without now just to explain why we're using light passes is because if the client asks for a different intensity of the color, you do not need to go back to Maya and readjust your lights and re-render the whole project. It's as simple as us dropping a grade node in here and play around with something like multiply. We want harsher, stronger light, no problem. That can be provided. Even you can take this further and even change the color of the light. So I can just go in there and say, all right, how about a light, a green color? Will that better? And you can easily select the node, press the D key and go before, after, before, after. And that's the power of light AOVs. Now enough with that, I'm going to disable that and then bring the environment into the whole equation i can actually move this this way uh, restructure the uh, node tree a little bit that's better i'm going to select these two now so select the merge node shift select the environment and press m again as usual what i would like to do is to set the operation to plus so before, after, before, after. And again, uh, it will happen a lot when the client asks for a warmer environment in general. So all you need to do is you drop in a grade node, go to multiply and start introducing warmer color. Of course, you can do those minor adjustments after the fact. So I'm going to bring in my beauty just to compare the result. So if I select beauty and if you look at here, I'm gonna press two, one, two, one, two, switching between the composite and the beauty and you see they look identical. What I usually do right at the end, I actually do drop in a grade node. So I tend to change few of these attributes and introduce a little bit of warm color into black points, something like that. Again, totally optional. But then if you would like to clone that to your beauty so you basically see the same thing, of course, one way of doing this is just to copy and paste the node and drop it in there. But every time you change your grade here, you gotta go and change your grade here as well. What I always suggest is Alt-K and that gives you a clone, whereas this node is now linked to grade two. And I click that and bring that in the middle of these two, and now these two are linked. You change one, you change the other. That's how you use your light AOVs using light groups inside Maya. It's a perfect strategy if you 
if your intention is to decompose your lighting setup, you can even combine this workflow with your shading AOVs inside Maya bring indirect diffuse, direct diffuse, indirect specular, direct specular transmission, so on and so forth, and really have full control over the coloration and the lighting setup in your scene. So if there is any possible changes in the future, you don't need to re-render anything. These AOVs got you covered. This scene is also available on my Patreon page, so drop by, download the scene so you can follow along. I put the Nuke script as well, so you can just have access to that and download and use the Nuke script at the same time. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you use it in your own projects. And until the next how-to video, talk to you guys soon.